Shalom, little Hebrews, Yah's set-apart children's place. Well, you will soon begin a great journey. Your understanding between the differences between Israel's captivities and the curses. This lesson series will ask one basic question. What is the difference between the captivities and the curses? Yah willing, at the conclusion of this series, you will be able to answer and understand the answer to this question. But for now, we would like to present a preliminary, which is an introduction, little Hebrews, of this upcoming lesson on Israel's captivities and the differences between these captivities and what we know as the curses, which is so famously outlined in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we pray this foundation will help you to understand your actual Shabbat lesson that is forthcoming. Throughout this lesson, you will most likely hear from your teachers um, some terms that you may or may not understand. But not just in this lesson will you hear them, you've probably heard them before. The Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom the ten tribes and the two tribes, the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Israel. Have you heard these terms before, little Hebrews? Do you know what they mean? Let us find out. So our lesson today will is called the splitting of the tribes and we will take a look at how the tribes were split so that when your teachers bring forth your lesson on the captivities versus the curses and you hear these terms, ten tribes, two tribes, you will understand what these terms mean and we can ensure that you will, uh, this will help you to understand the lesson as a whole. Now. Our story begins with King Solomon in the book of 1 Kings. Now, King Solomon, little Hebrews, was the son of King Dawid or King David. I know you remember him, the one who killed the giant. Yes, him. And King Solomon was the wisest king that ever ruled Israel, little Hebrews, because he understood Yah's law. One of Yah's laws was for the Israelites not to take foreign women. This means, little Hebrews, for the Israelites not to take women as wives who are not from our nation, the nation of Israel. Because in those days, little Hebrews, the nations were doing very wicked stuff, like bowing down and sacrificing to idols and gods. So, Yah wanted to protect us. He wanted to protect the Israelites um, from this by keeping us set apart. And being set apart, we were instructed not to go into their ways. You know, not to do what the nations were doing. Not to worship the gods and not to take their women as wives and give our women to their men as wives and not to worship their idols. Now, King Solomon was a very rich man, little Hebrews. Yah gave him all kinds of servants and food and precious gold and silver and spices. He also had many wives. He had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. But Solomon loved foreign women. He loved to marry women of the other nations, whom Yah had said, You do not go into them. And they do not go into you, for they shall certainly turn away your hearts after their gods. But these women Solomon loved the most. So he held on to them in love. But sadly, little Hebrews, his wives turned away his heart. They convinced him to follow their gods and to sacrifice to their Elohims and to turn away from Yah. King Solomon went after Ashra, the mighty one of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. He did evil in the eyes of Yah and did not follow him completely like his father, King Dawid. He even built a high place for Kamosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Yerushalayim, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. So, Yah was very angry with King Solomon, and he told him that since he did evil in his eyes and did not follow him like his father, King Dawid, that he would tear the kingdom from his hands. 
but he won't take away all of it because he promised it to King Dawid, but that he will instead take away the kingdom from King Solomon's son. And this is how Yah spoke the prophecy to King Solomon. One day, one of Yah's prophets, Ahiah, met another servant named Jeroboam while walking along the way. Ahiah was wearing new clothes, right? He was wearing a new garment. But he took this new garment and he tore it into 12 pieces and said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself 10 pieces, for thus said Yah, the power of Israel. See, I am tearing the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and shall give 10 tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for the sake of my servant Dawid, and for the sake of Yerushalayim, the city which I have chosen out of all of the tribes of Israel. Because they have forsaken me, and bowed themselves to Ashrod, the mighty one of the Sidonians, to Kamosh, the mighty one of the Moabites, and to Milcom, the mighty one of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways." to do what is right in my eyes, and my laws, and my right rulings, as did his father David. But I do not take all the kingdom out of his hand, because I have made him ruler all the days of his life, for the sake of my servant Dawid, whom I chose because he guarded my commands and my laws. And I shall take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and give it to you, the ten tribes." And to his son I give one tribe, so that my servant Dawid shall always have a lamp before me in Yerushalayim or Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself to put my name there. So I take you, and you shall reign over all that your being desires, and you shall be king over Israel. These were the words that Yah spoke to his servant Jeroboam from brother Ahiah, his prophet. Let us do a quick recap of what we just read. Yah's prophet Ahiah had a garment. Let us pretend this puzzle is the garment. Ahiah tore the garment into 12 pieces like these here. These 12 pieces represented the 12 tribes of Israel. He then told Jeroboam to take for himself 10 of the 12 pieces. This tearing of the garment meant the tearing away of the kingdom from King Solomon's son's hand. The taking of the ten pieces by Jeroboam represented that ten tribes will be given to Jeroboam. The other two pieces he kept for the sake of King Dawid and Jerusalem. This represented the two tribes he would let King Solomon's son keep for the sake of Dawid's righteousness. This act, the splitting up of the clothes, represents the prophecy of the splitting of the nation.